Morning, all. All right, so, yep, I survived the night. I'm back. So we have two games tonight in the NHL. Uh, it is a quiet Monday as well in the news, so both of them in one video. Two for the price of one. Uh, so at 8.30 Eastern, the New York Islanders and the Edmonton Oilers uh, get to know one another. Uh, this is the first of two meetings they'll meet again December the 19th. A lot of people are going to be curious about how the Oilers do tonight because this is the first game under a brand new coach. Uh, McDavid's junior coach, but he, he's known for making good players better, so we'll see how things go. Uh, so on the Islanders' front, uh, they are 5-5-3. Five, five, and three. They do not come in playing their best hockey. Uh, Horvat, four goals, six assists thus far this season, so his goal totals do not project anywhere near the level uh, that they were at in Vancouver, but that's not really a huge surprise. Uh, on the Oilers' front, of course, they're 3-9-1, and one, and McDavid, two goals, eight assists, ten points. It is all about getting McDavid going, keeping McDavid happy, and hopefully he's getting healthier. Hopefully on their off days, he's taking it easy and, and, and getting himself better, because for the Oilers to really and truly turn this season around, that's what they're going to need. Uh, so again, that starts at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. It's a late start time for the first game of the night. And then at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific, Colorado and Seattle meet for the third and final time this year. Uh, they met on October 17th. Colorado won 4-1. to one. I believe that was in Seattle. And then November 9th, a 4-3 to three win by Seattle in Denver. So we'll see how things go tonight uh, in Seattle. So for Colorado, they're 8-5 and five to start the year, but they're 5-5 five and five in their last 10 and 1-5 and five in their last 6. So it's a, a lot of glass half empty, glass half full going on with them. Nathan McKinnon does seem to be picking it up scoring-wise, so that's good news for Avs fans. 6 goals, 9 assists, 15 points for McKinnon. Uh, on the Seattle front, they're five, seven, and three, and one step forward, one step back. They just they're they're not they're not really getting enough uh, momentum from wins to translate into the next ones. We'll see how they do tonight. Bjorkstrand's been quite good though. Six goals, six assists for Bjorkstrand. Man, Columbus misses his production, don't they? At any rate, let me know your winners in the comment section below. I've I've seen people complain about oh look at all these gamblers for trying to predict who wins games and their records. Yeah, no, we, we have a competition on the channel, and the winner at the end of the season gets a THG hoodie. So at any rate, uh, yeah, let me know your winners in the comment section below. And no, nobody pays any money for that. To If, if you ever see anything like, oh, THG wants money, it's not me. Anyways, uh, it's it's not. You can tell them to go go away uh, and, and use whatever colorful metaphors you want to along the way. So the Global Series is is this week, and it means that I have fewer games to cover during the week, but I'm going to have early days as well during the week. Uh, it'll be interesting to see that Sunday morning game, which is at 5 in the morning my time, 8 in the morning on the East Coast. It'll be interesting to see um, how, how well that's viewed in North America. For Europe, it's great, right? So this is... Detroit, Ottawa, Toronto, and Minnesota going over. And these four teams are in very different places. Detroit, 8-5-2 had a really hot start. They are up and down recently. Ottawa, 6-7, and seven, probably getting out of their home confines and going overseas and doing something fun and different will be good for them. Uh, Toronto, 8-5-2, and two, it feels like they really hit their stride against Vancouver. And as long as they keep that roster together, they should have some success. And Minnesota, 5-8-2. Coming off of a really tough loss last night against Dallas. So these four teams are in very different places. And now they're all going to the same place together. Uh, and, and yeah, it should make for some fun hockey. But there there are days uh, over the next couple of weeks where I look at the schedule and say, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to watch all of that. Not if I want to, you know, sleep and live and... All that fun stuff. Anyways, uh, so yeah, the four teams going over, a uh, number of Swedish players, and uh, the Minnesota Wild putting Freddie Goudreau on LTIR before heading over and bringing up Wallstead. Wallstead will be there. They're going to carry three goaltenders while they're over there. And you know what? Considering the numbers put up by Flurry last night, considering the numbers Gustafson's been putting up, maybe throw Wallstead a start. See what he can do. Uh, Minnesota's got a decent team. We know they can score. They're an exciting, fun team. Their their issue at this point is is kind of goaltending. So uh, for Minnesota, and, and if it's not the goaltending, well, it's the defense. But hey, why not give Wallstead a start and see if that gets things going? 
Uh, so yeah, it'll be fun. Now this morning, the Carolina Hurricanes deciding to really shake things up. So this, this jersey here, this is an Adidas Team Classic. I've never been happy with the logo on it. It's just why I really don't wear it. But the Adidas version of this has now been released on the NHL shop. Uh, so there's a white Whalers jersey because they have a Whalers night coming up February 10th. And they also tweeted out pictures of players wearing Cooperalls. Now, I do not have a pair of Cooperalls. But if they're going to sell Cooperalls, well, they'd probably be ridiculously expensive, to be honest, when I think about it. But you can't wear Cooperalls during a game. So, of course, they wear breezers, which... If you call them shorts, people that are hockey people get all like antsy and their brains will explode. But uh, they wore Cooperalls in Philly and in Hartford, and they were basically long pants. And players said they were very comfortable, they could get up to really good speeds, which was great. The problem was when you fell down wearing the Cooperalls, uh, they were ridiculously dangerous. You just, you right into the boards at full speed. So the NHL pretty quickly realized uh, we don't want guys having both of their ankles snapped in half when they hit the boards. So at, at best, right? So they banned them. So as far as I know, the NHL still does not allow Cooperalls to be worn during the game. My guess is they'll wear the Cooperalls for the warm-up and, and then go and, and put on their nice little breezers and go back out there and play the game. Uh, but it, it's a fun look. It is. It's a fun look. Um, I've still got a bunch of hockey cards from the 80s with the Cooperalls when the Flyers and the, 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 the uh, Whalers wore them. And it's it's a nice throwback by Carolina. So, um, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about that. Again, I, I will pick up the white Whalers jersey just because look at this. Just look at this. This is... No, it, it, it really comes across as like a Fanatics, basically. The, and yet... And yet somehow it, it's an Adidas Team Classic. Somehow it's it's kind of worse. Uh, at any rate, yeah. So we'll see how well those sell and how quickly they sell out. My guess is pretty quick. Can we have a blue one though? I'd really like to see a blue Whalers jersey. Since we've already gone down the Whalers rabbit hole, why not do the blue one as well? The blue one's the one that I think a lot of people would like to see come back for, for just a couple of games. Uh, good news for Tampa Bay fans. Andre Vasilevsky at practice. So Vasi's getting closer. Uh, if he's at practice, he'll be back pretty quickly here. Uh, he doesn't mess around, and he doesn't seem like the type that would be at practice before he's able to be at practice. So as Johansson's numbers start to erode a bit, and we know that Tompkins is doing the best when he's in there that he can do, uh, getting Vasilevsky back is of the utmost importance. This is this is a league where goaltending is seemingly... I mean, it's it, it's it's important to have a really good goaltender. We can get into the cost of goaltending and everything as well, but uh, it's important to have at least one really, really good goaltender. And Vasilevsky, he's pretty darn good. So when he comes back, it should absolutely help Tampa Bay's numbers get better. I would imagine the players on the ice will play differently than they do with Johansson or with Tompkins. You're not as worried about an odd man rush the other way. You're not as worried about whether or not you know your goalie might allow one. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it could change how Tampa Bay is playing altogether. Uh, good news, bad news for Colorado. So when, when the Eagles were in town here a few weeks back, um, I did see Kiwi Ranta playing for the Colorado Eagles. I thought that was actually kind of cool. Uh, going through the Colorado roster and seeing him going, yep, I know that guy, you know what that is. Uh, yeah, it was great. Um, but he hadn't been signed by the Colorado Avalanche. So he'd been on a tryout, goes down to the Eagles, and now he has signed a contract with the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, Kiwi Ranta can play a fourth line role. I, I was fine with Dallas moving on from him. It felt like it was time for that, that divorce to take place, but I, I wish him the best with the Avs. Uh, the bad news for Abs fans is Frantzos. He will miss the rest of the season. So this was a lower body injury that wasn't seen as being a big deal, right? Uh, it's why they just, you know, they pick up Prozvatov on waivers and they weren't really in the hunt for another goalie because the rumor was that Frantzos wasn't going to be out that long. Well, now he not only is going to be out the rest of the year, he's gone home to Czechia and he's on an expiring contract. He's 33 years of age. He's an unrestricted free agent next summer. My guess is um, his NHL career is probably done. Because again, at age 33, he hasn't played a full season in a while. 
Um, yeah, he'll probably end up playing over in Europe next season if he is, you know, healthy to return at that point. It's too bad because I, I like Francois a lot. I think he's a good goaltender. He just never had any luck from an injury perspective. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.